Hello, my friends. My name is Ron. This is As the Spirit Moves. I want to talk to you today on a devotion called Sink or Swim. Sink or Swim. Years ago, I had to borrow a person's lawnmower to cut the grass. When I get done cutting my grass, I would clean the lawnmower really clean. I borrowed it. So I make sure it's clean better than what I found it. And I always give you a full tank of gas and returning it. Better condition than what I received it. That's the way it should be when you borrow something. It's your responsibility to maintain it and give it back in the same condition or better. I want to read from 2 Kings today. Chapter 6. And it's a short scripture here that tells us what's going on. They went down to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron head axe fell into the water. Oh no, he said, I, it was borrowed. Man, I got ass. Where did it fall? When showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick and threw it in there. And made the iron head swim. Left it out, he said, and man reached out his hand and took it. That goes against logic, goes against science. But the iron head would go into the water and sink to bottom. And a man, just because it was borrowed, a man said, Well, I cut a stick, and he did, and threw it in there, and the axe had swam. Attach yourself to the handle and then swim to shore for them to pick it up. You might say that's kind of amazing, isn't it? But I wasn't there to see it. I mean, this is something that happened 4,000 years ago. Kind of hard to believe. I'm not so sure about that. My dad was a reverend, a preacher. His important uh, habits of the day were to read the Word of God. I spent a lot of times praying, crying out in the, in, you know, in the spirit and really worshiping the Lord every day. He, before he would go out in the day, he makes sure he spent some time praying. And he fasted, of course, when he had a certain need because he wanted to be strong in the Lord. My dad went on a trip to Florida. He was in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, I'm not sure if you've been in the Atlantic Ocean but if you're in water about yay deep, you can't see the bottom because the sand just floats around the bottom. You can't see the bottom. Impossible. It's just too much stand stirring because the floor of the ocean is constantly moving. Well, my dad was up to his chest and he seen a wave coming. So he turned his back to the wave. And the wave hit him in the back. And his dentures fell out into the ocean. He looked down at them and he couldn't see nothing because it's serious. You can't see the bottom. So, when you're on a vacation, you want things to be nice. You don't want to, you can't go around looking for and find a new dentist to make a new plate. I mean, it really will interfere with a good vacation. My friends, uh, my dad had a friend named Bill. He's a spirit-filled man also. And so my dad went up to the shore and said, Bill, a wave hit me in the back and knocked out my, my, my upper plate. And the Bill says, what? Where did it happen? Out yonder? Maybe this way a little bit more. Out yonder, maybe about 100 feet. I mean, it's a big ocean. So Bill walked out there. But up to uh, his waist level, he was looking at the bottom and he couldn't see anything. He, like, you can't see the bottom. Is this this place? I'm not sure. Maybe this. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, really, around that area. So Bill, he's standing there. He feels something bounce against his foot. And then it kind of it bounce against his foot again. And then it bounced. Third time, something bounced against. He knows the fish. 
He knew it was a crab. He didn't know what it was, but he reached down and grabbed it, and there's my dad's dentures in his hand. Does things like that really happen? Absolutely. Things like ha that happen. What does it take to have a miracle? It takes a lot of prayer, a lot of faith, and you build it up over time. You got to build up. You know, if you don't build up, you're going to get off a week. Weak in the faith. When you're talking about deposits in a bank, if you want to draw money out, you have to have money inside the bank. You can't draw out what you don't have. And to have something to draw out, you got to deposit over time. A little bit here, a little bit there. And when you have that in a bank account, you can drop on it. A lot of people have today drawing you on their spiritual account. A lot of people don't pray like they should. Uh, we talked about giving tithes to God, the tenth of everything. A lot of us don't give a tenth of time to God. Yeah, we worship God on the way to work and we pray and we have a good time here and there back to work. I mean, it's might as well do something when you're driving, right? So why not pray? But you get home, that does, it counts. It does count your prayer. It counts a whole lot. But if you don't give one-on-one -on -one time to God, if you don't, you're not going to be able to face, draw upon the real power of God. You, you do that from praying, fasting, reading the Bible. How often do you read Bible? Once in a while, I'm talking to you like this for a reason, because I love you. I don't want you to be lukewarm and, and, and be unaccepted. A lot of people think they, go, think they believe they're going to go to heaven, but they don't live a close life spiritually. They're not sinking. They're not swimming. They're not swimming. They're sinking. It happens slowly. You relax. Well, I don't have time to read the Bible like I should. Nobody does. I don't. I find the time. I make the time. It's my duty as being a warrior of God to make the time to read the Bible. It's my duty as a warrior of God to, to go out equipped with power from the Holy Spirit. That comes by prayer, by fasting, and reading the Bible all together. I know you don't have time, but you don't really have enough time not to. Because I tell you what, you might be a cold, lot colder than what you think you are. And we say, well, Jesus understands. No, he doesn't. He does, does not understand. He get this life for you sins. He did not understand why you don't pray, why you don't read the Bible. Except in Revelation 3.16. Because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. <laughs> Do you really think you're seriously going to heaven when you have to be spit out because you neither hot or cold? You don't spend consistent time. I'm telling you this, brother, because you need it, and I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't steal you this, but I love you. I want to motivate you to be strong in the Lord. I don't want you to be sinking. I want you to be swimming out there. We are forerunners of the God of Jesus Christ. How can you, how can you, for, how can you run with the warriors when you're sinking? You cannot swim. Matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first. Hold on a minute. Not second. Not third. Not fourth. Not tenth place. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That means his purity. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things should be added to you. Do you need a miracle? When you seek God first, you can call upon the Almighty God when you need a miracle and hear from heaven. Hear from God. Build up in the faith. And if you know your word, you know the promises of God. Upon the promises of God, you can build 
up on those premises. You can, uh, you can walk with good health, peace and mind, body and spirit. And bold, uh, walk with the boldness of the Lord Jesus Christ. How about you today, my friends? Are you going to be hot or cold? If you're cold, lukewarm, all you got to do is repent. Ask forgiveness for being cold or lukewarm. And recommit your life to God, praying every day, reading the Bible every day, so you can call upon the things that God wants you to have. I want you to be blessed today and have a super week. God bless you. I love you. So does God. Amen.